Steven Universe and all associated images are property of Cartoon Network, Rebecca Sugar, and any and all other respective owners. I don't know them all. All footage in this video has been used for the purpose of critique parody under fair use. Please support the official release. I can't even believe I'm getting the chance to say this, guys, but as of posting this video, I am above 10,000 subscribers on my channel. I know I've talked about breaking like 2,000 subscribers and 6,000 subscribers, but this is a real milestone, and it's all thanks to you guys. It's thanks to you guys coming back here and watching my dumb videos all the time. That's why I can say that I am finally starting to find some success in something that I genuinely love to do. This is something that I didn't expect to happen back when I started doing theories on my channel. Those of you who have been around since then know that I was entirely surprised by exactly how popular my theory series got. And to be perfectly honest, I'm still a bit dumbstruck by it. I can only hope that I can continue to make content that you guys enjoy, that I enjoy making, until I have another 10,000 subscribers, or even more. After all, as much as I do this for myself, because I do enjoy doing it, I also do it because I like that you guys enjoy it. Since it is the holiday season, I considered doing something holiday-themed as a way of giving something back to you guys, but Steven Universe isn't really a show that has holiday-themed content, so I kind of don't want to either. I have, however, noticed that I tend to take for granted my knowledge of aspects of the show that I've done large amounts of research on myself, and that I don't really explain some aspects of my theories as fully as I could. This is something I've always had trouble with since I was a kid, distinguishing between what is common knowledge to me and what is common knowledge to others, because I forget that not everyone has had the same experiences that I do. So in order to give you guys some extra content and to sort of set a baseline regarding some of those aspects of the show that I think that some fans might not have a complete knowledge of, I decided to do my first top 10 list, 10 for 10,000, on the top 10 Steven Universe misconceptions, or if you prefer, the top 10 things that Steven Universe doesn't really explain as well as it should. I've never really done a top 10 list before, so for lack of a segue, I'm just going to jump right into this. Number 10. Corrupted gems are also known as battle damage gems. While the term corrupted gem is very widely accepted by the fandom and is entirely accurate, another equally accurate term for these creatures is battle damage gems, which suggests that whatever caused their corruption is a form of battle damage and it is the entire basis for my corrupted gem theory. Now, there are plenty of other theories out there as to how corrupted gems became corrupted, the most likely of which is not mine, it is actually that corruption is a form of brain damage. But what is the gemstone if not the gem's mind? Their brain. Everything that they are is contained inside that thing, like data. So physical damage to the gem or corruption to the data might actually have the same effects. Either way, it's important to remember that these terms are effectively interchangeable. Neither is right and neither is wrong. Number nine, gems absolutely cannot change their gem placement when they regenerate. This is something that I know a lot of fans have suspected based on content in the show, as even when a gem shapeshifts, the gemstone always ends up on the same part of its body, regardless of what it turns into. Even when Amethyst turns herself into a ball, she still has a face, and her gemstone is still about as far down from her face as her chest would be. This is something that a member of the crew actually had to come out and confirm. And while I don't consider things like books or comics or even Word of God to be level 1 canon, it is different when it is a crew member clarifying something that the show didn't quite make clear. This isn't them talking about something that hasn't happened or might happen. This is them talking about something that has happened that the show just didn't do a very good job of getting across. So remember, if you ask yourself why they don't simply move their gem at some point or another, remember it's because they can't. Number 8. All gems have effectively the same biology. I say this because while there are some exceptions, such as Amethyst, who is smaller than the average gem of her type, or Pearl, who seems to have a pocket dimension where most gems don't, all gems are the same species. There are different types of gems in the same way that there are different races of human beings. While they are part of a species that is effectively artificial and does lend itself to being altered scientifically, Unless we are expressly told otherwise, it is irresponsible of us as theorists and fans to assume that gems don't share the same ability set. Unless we are expressly told otherwise, there is no reason for us not to believe that all gems can shapeshift, regenerate, summon a physical weapon from their gemstone, and that all gems have additional powers, aside from these things, that are in some way unique to them slash their gem type. 
I'll use Sapphire as an example here, since I've been talking with a lot of you guys in the comments on my Ruby and Sapphire video, and we have a Sapphire episode coming up, and I'm just psyched to talk about the character. But yes, Sapphire does have future vision, but that's not her gem weapon. She still has to have a gem weapon in addition to that. Just like she has the ability to shapeshift, she can regenerate from her gem, and she can cool the area around her as part of her additional power set. This is just like how Pearl can walk on water and also summon a spear. And this is why I don't believe the theory that Pearl can't shapeshift. She's been shown to fuse, and based on all of the visual evidence, fusion is just an extension of shapeshifting, so I see no reason to think why she would be an exception to the rule. I mean, that's how biology works. Members of the same species tend to, at the basis level, be able to do the same things. Number seven. Gems are not immortal. They are ageless. There is a distinct difference between these two terms. Immortality suggests that the being which has it is incapable of dying. That's not true for gems, and therefore they are not immortal. Number six, gems are not genderless, they are sexless. With the exception of Steven, who is the first gem ever to be born with a sex, all gems are sexless beings. I mean, after all, they are effectively a hunk of rock with a hologram around it. But just because they are sexless, it doesn't mean they are genderless. All of the gems that we have met so far have been female in figure, and have referred to themselves and others using female pronouns, with the occasional exception of Amethyst, who, when shapeshifting into a male form, does, according to the crew, refer to herself with male pronouns. This is an important distinction to make, as it is a very important aspect of the gems in their character. Number five, Steven cannot be poofed. Not only has the crew themselves said this, but it just doesn't make sense that he would be able to be poofed. The reason that gems can retreat into their gem is because they are able to deactivate their holographic body. Steven doesn't have one of those, therefore he can't be poofed. That's actually all I've got for that one, it's pretty short, so moving on. Number four, fusions follow only two common design rules. That being that all fusions have some degree of extra body parts, and that all fusions have multiple gemstones, one for each component. The design of a fusion has nothing to do with how stable the relationship is, and you cannot distinguish a fusion based on the color scheme of the gem or based on whether or not it has irises in its eyes. Those are all fan theories, and they are myths. Not only have they been disproven by evidence in the series, but they have been flat-out refuted by members of the crew. And while it is entirely possible that a fusion of villainous characters or of untrustworthy characters or of characters who don't do well together might look more monstrous than a fusion of characters who do get along well, that is entirely a design decision and has nothing to do with in-universe logic. Number three, the Earth in Steven Universe is very different than our Earth. You may have noticed watching episodes which show the Earth, either from orbit or in the form of a hologram or etc., that Steven's Earth looks different from ours. There are certain details that are just not what you would expect. Not only that, but names of places seem to be radically different in Steven's world, with states having entirely different names, and with the country of Mexico seemingly being called Aqua Mexico in this world. There is some debate amongst the fandom as to exactly why Earth and Steven Universe is so different from our own, but I'm not going to get into that today, as I do have a theory coming up which will address the subject. Needless to say, though, something big happened sometime in the past of the series, and chances are, based on the narrative structure, we're never going to be directly told what it is, unfortunately. But until we know for sure, we kind of just have to guess. Number two. Steven Universe is not a kid's show. It is a family show. Steven Universe is a show that is meant to be accessible to people across multiple age demographics. It's a show that kids of varying ages and their parents can watch together and enjoy it. The fact that it is made to be accessible to kids at all is what makes Steven Universe a remarkable show, considering some of its subject matter. But calling it a kid's show specifically is not fair to the crew, and it's not fair to the show itself. And finally, number one, Rose is dead. That's right, unfortunately, and as much as I hate saying it, Rose is dead. She's gone. She's not poofed. She did not give up half of herself to become half of Steven. There is no second half of Rose floating around somewhere, and unfortunately she's not just sitting around inside Steven's gem waiting to regenerate at some point. She's gone. The crew had talked about this on several occasions, and then the book Guide to the Crystal Gems flat out confirmed it, 
The data stored on Rose's gemstone, which made up everything that she was, became a part of Stephen when he was born. Rose is Stephen now. And while I don't think that her influence is gone forever, Rose herself is. So sorry all you guys who are out there theorizing ways that she might be able to come back into the show. That's just not going to happen. And once again, for lack of a segue, let's jump right into the outro. That's my first top ten video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I made this specifically for you. Once again, I thank you for getting me where I am. I couldn't have done this without you guys. I love every single one of you, and I hope you stick around far into the future, because I don't plan on stopping this anytime soon. But, guys, what did you think of this video? Would you like to see more top tens, or would you like to see me otherwise branch out more from my typical theory videos and reviews? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. Either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.